Well, one thing that came out, by the way, from the coronavirus package that passed Congress this past December is when people are getting the $600 check, people who are in mixed marriages, and we're not talking about mixed marriages in terms of race, we're talking about mixed marriages where there is one person who is a resident or a U.S. citizen and somebody who is out of status or not living in the United States of America, those people who filed tax returns did not get the stimulus the first time around. That has been fixed this time. And people in those type of mixed marriages in the CARES Act are getting $600 as well as retroactive payments of $1,200 from the prior CARES oh, Act. Nice. Now, you know, how do you know if somebody is in, in that type of marriage? Well, the IRS has no idea, you know, what your immigration status is when you file your tax return. And there are people who are undocumented who have a social security number who got stimulus checks. So basically, if you filed a joint tax return with somebody who had a social security number, my presumption would be that the IRS, I mean, I'm sure there's an example that doesn't exist, but my presumption is the IRS has no idea, Treasury Department has no idea whether or not what your immigration status is. And if you have a social security number, they sent you a check. But probably what they did would be my guess. I didn't ask every last person, but probably what they did is if you filed a tax return with a social security number and a taxpayer ID number, those people probably did not get the stimulus. Oh. So that has been fixed. You know, with the incoming administration, Congress likely poised to consider increasing those checks. As a matter of fact, it came out right before I, we came on the air today that Biden is going to propose $1,400 additional. So everybody will be getting that if it passes, everybody will be getting that $2,000 stimulus, 600 from the check that was already sent out, plus another right. 1,400. He said 1400. he is going to request Congress to pass that on day one. I'm okay with that. You're okay with that. Another 1,400 <laughs> in yo-yo and boss lady's pocket, right? Yes. I well, mean, what you gonna yeah. do, Brad? What you gonna do? Well, I don't know. You're like, you're like, you're like, nice gifts, I'm gonna take it. You're like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give it, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah. What was that? What was that? The guy from the for from the, the money resides. Right, 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 right. That's right. That was it. The guy from the car. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, and in addition, in addition, they're going to extend and do some sort of boost of unemployment insurance through at least March or April. So, in addition to whatever uninsurance people are getting right now for unemployment, they are going to boost that as well. All of that, Joe Biden is going to be making a speech sometime. Maybe he's doing it right now, but at some time this evening, all of that is going to be proposed to be passed on day one. Meanwhile, investigators are now looking into the possibility, this is sick, 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 that the Capitol riot was more than just a protest that spiraled out of control, because that's what everybody is led to believe. However, there is some evidence that has been uncovered that would indicate that it was pre-planned, this entire thing, because people got caught with weapons. People were seen on surveillance video placing bombs. That is not a spontaneous march to the Capitol that got out of control. That is pre-planned. Questions have also been raised about whether rioters had insider help from several Congress people. Ali Alexander, the organizer of Stop the Steal movement, that was the movement that went across Facebook that was the lie that Donald Trump was, was saying to everybody that Biden stole the election from him, which is absolutely not true. Now, the organizer of the Stop the Steal movement said he hatched a plan alongside representatives Andy Biggs of Arizona, Mo Brooks of Alabama, and Paul Gosar of Arizona, all hard-line Trump supporters. The Department wow. of Justice is using tactics it typically employs in counterterrorism investigations to apprehend and charge suspects. Now, a slew of new charges has come out today, including we talked about the Olympic medalist Cleet Keller and a man seen on video wearing a Camp Auschwitz sweatshirt. Now, Auschwitz being the concentration the camp concentration in Poland. Camp where millions of Jews got murdered by the Nazis. The number of new federal criminal cases is now up to 32. 
They expect within the next couple of days to charge hundreds more. Kevin Good. Seafried, who is carrying the Confederate flag, and his son, Hunter Seafried, are expected to be arraigned later Thursday in U.S. District Court, more than 150 years after the end of the Civil War. The image of the Confederate battle flag being carried outside the Senate floor was a stark reminder of the persistence of white supremacism mm. here in the United States mm. still. Do you guys think that any of these people actually thought that they were going to get arrested and tried and like get no, actual no, prison? No, they just... really thought th these were all anarchists, white supremacists, Nazis, guys wearing Camp Auschwitz sweatshirts, you know, Nazi. You know, guys wearing a Confederate him. flag. Could be Ku Klux Klan, Nazi, anarchist, proud boy. I don't know. All the same crap to me, right? I think they really believed Donald Trump that they were going to overthrow the and government. Not. Nobody, <laughs> no, who, go, who goes into a war to lose? Does anybody ever go into a war to lose? Nobody ever goes no. in. All right? I've never met anybody who's ever gone into a war to lose. So if you go into a war, people, people don't go, you know, I'm going to go into war and I'm definitely going to lose. OK, no, yes, no yes, if you're doing peaceful protests to bring attention mm -hmm. and you bring attention, yes, people go into that situation saying, I know I'm going to get arrested, but I'm bringing attention to to an issue. I don't think these people thought they were getting arrested. They were going to war to overthrow the U.S. government. That's what I believe. Yeah, they thought they were in the clear, obviously. Now, meanwhile, Trump. We thought the pumpkin was getting weird. The pumpkin's getting weirder by the minute. Now, there are predictable moments, such as, you know, he now has now turned against Rudy Giuliani, his lawyer. What? Wow. Yes, Not Trump, his right hand. Yes. After everything Rudy Giuliani did for Donald wow. Trump, including bleed black dye out of his hair on a hot day <laughs> right. in front of the Four Seasons nursery. Everybody thought it was the Four Seasons Hotel in Philadelphia. That was really funny. <laughs> and after everything he did, including going to including going to Ukraine to try to get dirt right. on Biden. Think about everything Giuliani did for Trump. He's now Donald Trump has now told his staff not to pay Rudy Giuliani his fee. Wow. Yes. So at the end of the day, after everything Rudy Giuliani did for Donald Trump, he's getting stiffed on his fee. I actually love it. But that happens to all the lawyers. Almost really? all. Yeah, lawyers who lose the case never get paid. You only oh, get you all. They he lost the case for Trump. He didn't get the. He didn't get the. He didn't steal the election back for Donald Trump. He lost. Right. Lawyers. Right, but it lawyers who lose don't get paid. That's generally how it works. But the, how about all the work that you put in? Of course, all the work you put in. The lawyer. I'm not saying the lawyer doesn't deserve to get paid, but uh, I'm saying generally. He just does when, it. I'm generally when you lose a case, the clients always screw the lawyer. But, but but I'll tell you, you this. You, th you, but, think he, you think he really thought he was going to win the election back? Like yes. after? Yes. He's that delusional. What? Yes. Why would he do this? <laughs> now, he didn't do this for his jollies. He did this to try to overthrow the United States of America. He said other strong men have done it. Other people, every, every dictator, every authoritarian figure from in the last hundred years, Adolf Hitler, Adolf, yeah. I'm not saying Donald Trump is Adolf Hitler, but Adolf Hitler was elected in a fair democratic election. And then he never left. Mm. Vladimir Putin was elected in somewhat of a fair election. He's never left. Edrigan in Turkey, elected in a fair election, has never left. Same thing with the Eritrean president. That's correct. The playbook, mm -hmm. the playbook for authoritarian figures is to gain legitimacy by being elected in a fair election and then once getting in power, consolidating that power and then rigging everything so they never leave. Wow. That's what he tried to do. <laughs> it's wild. There's also some other bizarre moments. Um, he, he talked about going to Congress uh, yesterday uh, to defend himself in the impeachment. That would have been that would have been interesting. I wish he would have done that. 
uh, quoting sources inside the White House because, you know, you know, if you're guilty of something, the first thing every lawyer does, this is lawyering 101, if you are guilty, do not get on the stand and testify. You will get shredded. Shredded. That's why you, are, that's why you always see the, the, the criminal defense lawyer like, my client's not going to testify. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, not all the time, and not because you didn't testify doesn't mean you're guilty, but, you know, usually, you know, you get shredded when, right. when, when you go to testify. And, and the reason is this is because you don't have to prove your innocence. They got to prove your guilt. So uh, as soon as you come to testify, you're already assuming they've proven their your guilt and you're trying to talk your way out of it and it just gets worse and worse and worse. Ooh. Now, I never knew why. Yeah, now quoting sources from inside the White House, the New York Times said, while the House was voting, Trump was furious at Republican members for opposing him on the House floor, particularly Kevin McCarthy. Uh, he is the House Minority Leader. He did not vote for impeachment, but what he said was that Donald Trump caused the riot and that Trump should be censured. What Kevin McCarthy did was he took the, I don't want to call him a dirty name, he took the cat way out, if you understand, okay? Meow. Yeah, the meow way out. Because <laughs> right. uh, he came out and like said, the censorship there. yes, he came out and he said what Trump did was wrong. He sent a violent mob to try to to try to disrupt the electoral college vote. But I think he should be censured. And I'm not going to vote for impeachment. Censure is just that the House representative says what you did was bad. Right. It has no teeth to it. It has nothing to it. So he he has. He has basically taken the cat way out so he can go and play either side, depending on how everything, how everything, you know, turns out. So, for example, if Trump it be, still becomes the leader of the Republican Party after all this is said and done, I doubt it. But if he does, he can stand up and say, I didn't vote for impeachment. And if Trump <laughs> is ousted and everyone hates wow. Trump in the Republican Party, he could say... I stood up on the House floor and said what he did was wrong. It's just playing both sides. Wow. It's it's the cat way. Yes. Meow. Meow. I don't want to say it. <laughs> this, is, this is a family we get, show. We get it. This is a family we, show. Right. <laughs> now, some advisors have suggested that Trump resign before his term ends to avoid the risk of conviction and getting barred from running in 2024, but Trump has refused. He cites Richard Nixon. He said after Nixon resigned, he lost power in the Republican Party. So Trump is not going to resign because he is going to try to keep the grip of the Republican Party. Uh, in the next coming months, it is going to be a fight for the soul of the Republican Party. Is it going to be Donald Trump still in control or is Trump going to be ousted? Mm. That is what, you know... And Mitch McConnell, the, the, the Senate leader, he's already taken a side. He says, oust Trump. He wants to have the trial for the impeachment after Biden becomes president. But Mitch mm. McConnell has already said, oust him. Meanwhile, they say that there's going to be a record audience for Joe Biden's inauguration. Much different than Donald Trump, who claims he had a record audience. Remember, Donald Trump said he had a big record audience and then they showed the pictures and there was nobody there in the there Washington Hall. Yeah. No. Yeah, there were empty spots. Yeah. Is yeah, that over? Lot. Yeah, but, but the reason why is I think because of the events of what's happened in the last few weeks and because everything's going to be televised because nobody's going to be able to go to Washington, D.C. to attend in person. So as a result, TV or, the TV networks are, are believing that this is going to be the most watched inauguration ever in the history of of the United States. The numbers oh, the num by August record. I was like, yeah. I thought they weren't gonna have people there like No, no, that, they're talking about television. The television numbers got... to be oh, yeah. who do you think had the largest television audience of an inauguration ever? Obama? Nope. Obama. Nope. It's surprising. Uh, Clint nope. Clinton. Nope. Don't tell me Bush. Nope. What, like a Reagan? Reagan. Reagan? Reagan did, yes. Yeah. 41.8 million viewers watched Ronald Reagan's inauguration. Now, if you remember, wow. 
Reagan took office three or four, maybe a week. It was a couple days or a week or two weeks, but it was a very short period of time. It was right at the end of the Iran hostage crisis, 1979 mm. going into 1980. The United wow. States was in a deep recession. Oil was spiking. People were waiting on lines. Uh, if you're, if you're um, your license ended in an odd number. You can only fill your car up with gas on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If it was an even number, you can only fill your car up on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So, and there was long lines for gasoline. Unemployment was like 15%. The United States just went through the Iran hostage crisis. The military tried to go in and rescue the hostages, if you remember and their helicopters broke in the desert because the helicopters that they sent in were not meant to be landed in a desert. So the whole entire yeah. Iran hostage thing was a disaster. Americans felt terrible about everything. And Ronald Reagan came in, Mr. Hollywood, you know, because he was a, you know, a Western Hollywood actor. So people were just really hoping for just something. You know, with Biden, it's the same thing, except worse. Except right, now, right. because of what we just went through with Trump. So people believe, people believe that this is going to be the highest record wow. television audience of an inauguration ever in the history of the United States. Wow. I mean, there were no cell phones during yes. Reagan, yeah. so we might just double people watch it from their phones, too. Now, right. this is interesting because we've been talking about the Flint water crisis throughout the last couple of years on our show. Now... Former Michigan Governor Rick Snyder and ex-Flint Public Works Director Howard Croft have been charged in the Flint water crisis. Twelve people have died, and they, they got at least 80 people sick from knowing that the water was poisoned in Flint, Michigan, and did nothing about it. Each are facing counts of willful neglect of duty, which is a misdemeanor in Michigan. Flint has been exposed to extremely high levels of lead since 2014 when city and state officials switched the city's water supply from Detroit water system to the contaminated Flint River in an effort to cut costs. Several, about a year and a half ago, we had Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha on our show. She is a doctor at the University of Michigan, and she is the doctor who uncovered what was happening in Flint. Nobody understood why people were getting sick. This woman who we interviewed on our show a year and a half wow. ago was the woman who led a crusade to figure out why people were getting sick and then exposed all of the contamination and the contamination that was done purposefully and negligently by the government in Michigan. Now, a year and a half later, or actually it's six years later because people started getting sick in 2015, finally, the governor and the public works director of Michigan being charged criminally. But let's go back and look at a short clip from my interview with Dr. Uh, uh, Hannah Atisha because we had her discussing this on our show a year and a half, two years ago. Let's watch. Uh -oh. What does lead do to children? Great question. And that's when my life changed when I heard the word lead. Because as a pediatrician, we know what lead does. It is a poison. It's an irreversible neurotoxin with no safe level. It impacts children's cognition, dropping IQ levels, impacts their behavior. It alters their entire life course trajectory. We are never supposed to use children. We're never supposed to expose them to lead. Um, because really we are only, when we detect it in a child, it just tells us there's an environmental problem. How would you, there, I would say there's a direct correlation between what happened to the children in Flint and what's happening to children on the border right now in terms of their emotional growth and, uh, and their emotional stability. You want to talk a little bit about that about what happens to children in stressful situations and what stresses children and how that affects them growing up. So the same mechanism that is happening at the, for the children at the border is what's happening in Flint. We call this toxic stress. This is probably the most important concept right now in pediatrics and public health. It is the recognition of early trauma, early life trauma, 
on what happens to the lifelong development of children. It's the same thing as what's going on the border, as in Flint. Children are rattled with so many toxic stresses from poverty, violence, separation of parents, uh, incarcerated parents, lead poisoned water. All of these are toxicities. And they have, a, a, they impact children's brains. We know the science. It impacts their nervous system, their genetics, their immune function. And children exposed to these toxic stresses without being buffered, without the positivity, will have lifelong scars. So she was the one who discovered all of this. Wow, that's huge. Right, and now, you know, as the epilogue to all of this, the governor, what happened to me? There we are. There you are. The Black governor, up. the governor, the ex-governor of Michigan, not the current governor, arrested. Wow. Oh, wow. Good. Yeah. I love that we have that clip to yeah. go back to. Yeah. Wasn't it great? And, and by yeah. the way, just in FYI, Dr. Atisha's family came to the United States as immigrants from Iraq, and she ended up saving many, many Americans because she exposed mm. the Flint water crisis. Had she not exposed it, who knows how many people would have died? Wow. Because people were just getting sick, but nobody knew why. Nobody was right. connecting the dots why people were getting sick. Wow. Now, almost like an Aaron Brockovich in a way, if you ever watched that movie with Julia Roberts. It's very similar. Yes, it is. Yeah. Meanwhile, according to statistics from the John Hopkins University, there are now more than 92 million coronavirus cases worldwide. Earlier this week, the United States had another grim record. More than 4,300 people died per day in the last week. It's like having a 9-11 every day. Jeez. Meanwhile, researchers in Ohio have discovered two new variants of the virus, but they say it's not any deadlier than it was than these other variants. Uh, but they do spread more easily. That's that UK virus. Now, mm. the NBA has postponed some, ca some games this week. Some of the players are getting sick. So masks are in on the bench. Handshakes and high fives are out. Mm. Pharmacies are also offering their help. The CEO of the National Association of Chain Drug Stores has volunteered pharmacies to administer the 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine, giving important backup to overwhelmed healthcare systems. In 36 days since countries started vaccinating, only 28 million people in the world have actually got a dose of a vaccine. And only one of those countries is a low income country, according to the World Health Organization. There's more than 5 million new COVID cases every day in the world and more than 85,000 deaths every day in the world from COVID. Wow. That's, that's a Joe lot. Joe Biden says as part of his coronavirus legislation that he wants to propose, he wants to get a 100 million shots in 100 million Americans in the first 100 days, which means a million people a day he wants to do. That mm. would be great. I hope yeah. we can do it. Because right yeah. now, very, very few people are getting this vaccine. And until we get vaccines into people's arms, this is just going to go on and on right. and on and on. The most important thing, as far as I am concerned, I mean, there's a lot of important things, but to me, if you want to get the economy back, you want to get back to life, you want to get cities to become vibrant, you want to get people on an airplane, you want to get people traveling, you want to get the workers back in restaurants, the workers back in, in offices, including this office, Sparren Bernstein. Yeah. You got to get a vaccine in people. Other than yeah. that, we're just going to, it's going to be Groundhog's Day for us day after day. It's right. literally, I feel, I feel it's Groundhog's Day. Yeah. I feel like Biden's going to do it though. I hope so. I hope so. Right now, right now, it is a disaster. Yeah. It's a disaster. Because Six all, Trump, day, all yeah. Trump, Trump, here's the, here's the vaccine. Good luck. What we call Wacky World News Thursday. And as Vanessa said at the top, a super fan in the UK got drunk and legally changed his name 
on a drunken stupor at a bar <laughs> to Celine Dion. It's all now. Yep, it's all now coming back to him. Ooh. Yeah, he was. He's a little. He was a little hazy. It was like one of those. It was like for the movie The Hangover. You know, Hangover. he wait. He wakes up and his oh name. He doesn't remember changing his I name. I love Celine Dion. He doesn't remember changing his name. The thirty-year-old Celine Dion, formerly known as Thomas <laughs> Dodd, told. I don't know what I don't know what well, I guess the, the post I don't know what the post is but I guess some paper in England uh, that he came up with the idea while getting lit to the max and watching a TV concert by the 52 year old Canadian crooner <laughs> on Christmas Eve because he's just in love with Celine Dion. She is my go to person I listen to when I need some cheer it up. Uh, and also, obviously, obviously the booze he goes to what he needs some cheering up to. He said he spent much of the pandemic watching concerts while at home, including one by Celine Dion over the holiday that was accompanied by a magnum of champagne. He goes, that explains a lot. <laughs> while enjoying the concert, he plunked down one hundred and twenty two dollars, which is eighty nine pounds in the UK and officially took her name on an online application However, he doesn't seem to remember doing it. Uh, he goes, I honestly at heart don't remember doing it. I remember <laughs> watching the concert and I, re I remember getting rather tipsy. Days later, he came home from work as a he hospitality up, manager in Stafford, England to find an envelope that's, that changed his name from the local government. He goes, I wasn't aware I'd done it until I found this envelope in my mailbox, he explained. Initially, I had to sit down and I couldn't believe it. <laughs> And then I checked my bank, which confirmed it all. And then it all sunk in. I signed it straight away as I bloody lover, he said. He shared images of his change of name, Dean, on Twitter. And he did update his social media name to reflect his new name, which is now Are you Mr. Celine Dion. However, he actually changed the name? He literally changed his name legally. Yeah. However, one person who initially was not amused by the name change was his mother. His mother right. wasn't <laughs> pleased at first right. because his mother chose a different name for him. Thomas. That's hilarious. <laughs> you guys could change your name to a celebrity name, which who what celebrity would it be if you guys could change your name to a celebrity name? It would be and yo -Yo. squad too. Squ everybody in the squad's gonna get drunk and change their name to Yo Yo. <laughs> oh please. I'm changing my I'm changing my name where the money resides. Brad Bernstein. <laughs> right. But, Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, we're we're hanging out in England. We're hanging out in England. A glau, yeah. a I can't even pronounce this. A glau, glau, a Gloucestershire is that the name of the town? Gloucestershire man has started walking his tortoise Nancy Drew to the pub and around town. Why is everything so wacky in the UK? Yeah. Every I mean, UK is just wacky. Jason Smith says the African tortoise, which is actually a male, needs to burn off energy uh, as in the wild he would ordinarily be looking for a mate at this time of year. And poor Nancy Drew feels more cooped up than usual due to the COVID travel restrictions. So Nancy Drew has become famous around Tewksbury with people loving to stop and say hello to this tortoise. Oh Initially, they thought Nancy was a girl until one day she started trying to mate with a brick in the garden. Jason said, Charlotte oh. said to my wife, Kate, Jason said, Charlotte said to my wife, Kate, that there was going to be a new addition to the family. She thought she was going to be a grandmother, but got a tortoise instead. instead. I don't know if that's wacky news, fuzzy news. Could be a lot of different news that one. Could be a lot of yeah. Right. You could also go into hump day. I mean, the tortoise tried That's to right. hump. That's right. Yeah, tried to hump a brick. <laughs> we, brick. We, we, we could yeah. do this on any. That could be a Friday news, too. That was just happy it, Friday it, news. Tortoise, tortoise it, humping a brick. It's happy news. Yes. <laughs> yep. It could be all Great, Breaking news, actually. It could be breaking news, too. Very good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, scientists are saying the Earth is spinning faster than it has in decades. The Earth's 28 fastest days on record all occurred in 2020. That's why I'm so freaking dizzy. I, I know it. I, I didn't know why I was dizzy all year. I'm dizzy. I'm like, I'm like, can the world just slow down, please? I didn't realize that the world was really spinning faster. The Earth's rotation can change slightly because of weather and ocean patterns, and usually the Earth is an excellent timekeeper. But uh, this year, it was not very perfect. Did you feel the Earth was spinning faster? Absolutely not. 
Did you I have... only feel that over the no. weekend when, you know, yeah. <laughs> the party. <laughs> you, you, you and Thomas in, right. uh, in uh, England. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Celine Dion young... and Ariana Grande over here. Uh, but... uh, 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 <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, if Yo Yo shows up on Monday and, and all of a sudden was like, "Yes, we're with Vanessa and Beyonce." Yes, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> we know what happened. We know what happened. We, we just we have was, to accept uh, it. <laughs> it was a good weekend. Well, like Friday, he's Yo Yo, but today he's Beyonce. Comes uh, back, he's just gonna say the world was everything was just going really fast. But do you ever get your, work, all of it. you ever get? I sometimes I just like stop the world. I want to get off. You know, and, yes. and it's quite ironic that the world was going faster this year. I, that's crazy. That's quite ironic. By the way, we don't have to get on an airplane for spanning the world. Everything's happening in the UK. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's wacky news. Thursdays are usually mm. in the UK. Yeah. I mean, a 12 year old British aspiring DJ called Kale Bell organized an underground rave in a school bathroom in December. All the attendees were offered a soft drink at a Cadbury Twirl chocolate bar. The guest list to the bash included all year eight boys at St. Anthony's Catholic College in Greater Manchester. Kale's mom, Louise, posted the video of the rave on Facebook with the caption, Am I wrong for finding this funny? Well, he's home. I've asked him about it. He never lets me, da he never lets me down this boy. Belle told the mirror that she had to laugh. It's been a terrible year, and I couldn't be angry with my son for having a party in the boys' bathroom. What, what, what exactly happened? I don't understand what this boy did. You did right. Um, no. Wait. What? Yeah, I'm like, what? Huh? He, yeah. I guess he hosted a raid he, in, in, the in the bathroom. <laughs> and the DJ gear was confiscated. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that is a little wacky, especially in the midst of a... Okay, but okay. he's an entrepreneur in my eyes. Okay. 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 This is what he got. In Canada, uh -oh. uh, we have the photos of the winners of the most recent hair freezing contest. By the way, Vanessa, you could probably do this with your hair if you want to freeze your hair. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, Takini. Uh, it's, it's done at the Takini Hot Pools in Canada's <laughs> Yukon Territory. Their con contestants are awarded in five categories. Best male, best female, best wow. group. Uh, Nagsham's People's Choice and Tim Horton's Most Creative. The winner for this each category wacky. makes 1500 bucks. But you want to know what? You could just sit at home and, and get $1,400 stimulus and not freeze your hair. Right. <laughs> right. The contest has been around since 2011, steadily gaining popularity. This year's contest received 288 entries. Uh, Andrew Umbrich, owner and creator of Takini's Hot Pool, said, We like to think that the contest will bring some joy to viewers around the world. If you want to enter the hair freezing contest for next year, you need to visit Takini Hot Pools between December and March on a day when the temperature is below four degrees to achieve the perfect lip look dip your head in the hot springs wet your hair completely then allow the cold air to slowly freeze your hair until you catch wow. them, until you catch pneumonia so wait like they just stand out there until in the freeze cold them. that yes. long yes they don't have to worry about covid because you had tikini hot springs everyone leaves with pneumonia pneumonia yeah, right exactly <laughs> you know Oh, right. Right. doesn't everybody's that mother say, I like don't that go one. out in the cold with a wet hair. You will catch right. pneumonia. Right. That's well, wild. These folks, know, That's... these folks obviously feel it's myth. That's myth. Quick. Would you do yeah. that? Would you do that no, with your hair? No, I'm... <laughs> I'm no, I'm I get cold so easily. I am not made for anything colder. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll take my stimmy. Not only you probably would look I, not like Medusa, would I not do like that, the girls I don't, I don't know. Out like snake. <laughs> I, you know, unless you like to ski, okay? So, you know, there's an exemption for skiing. But short right. of I mean, that, I right, right. Short of that, if you live in cold weather, why mm -hmm. would you go from cold to colder? That's right. crazy, right? Right. Yeah. I would go from cold to warmer. With an exemption, yes. if you like skiing, then I understand. Thanks for watching. For more Brad Show Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.